They wish to fight with. The mind is as restless as a monkey and as strong as an intoxicated elephant. Controlling it, as said by Arjuna, is like trapping the wind. In regulating the mind, one needs the skill that is necessary in catching monkeys and training elephants. When Arjuna complained that controlling the mind was very difficult, Lord Krishna did not make light of it and say, for one like you, who has subdued the most heroic warriors, of what difficulty is the task of mastering the mind which is, after all, your own. You must be able to handle it as you like. But instead, understanding the gravity of the problem he says sympathetically, what you say is true, Arjuna. That the mind is very fickle and that, regulating it is very tough, are both true. The reason for Lord Krishna saying thus is that he knew the nature of the mind. Every animal and thing on earth has a distinct disposition to blow is the nature of the wind, to burn is the nature of the fire, to flow is the nature of water, likewise, to poke its nose everywhere, to jump about madly, to desire whimsically, to think about a thousand things, to fret over a host of worries, to build castles in the air, to bother about every other work than the one assigned, is the nature of the mind. With surroundings tending to provoke the mind which is by nature restless, what can one do, other than dancing to its tune? Therefore those who wish to control their minds should keep away from distracting environment. This does not mean that we have to leave the city, but only the mind should not be allowed to mingle with the surroundings. How is this done? Here the role of the five sense organs comes into picture. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin these are the vehicles of the mind. No sooner do the eyes spot something beautiful than the mind leaps straight into it. Thus the senses keep pulling the mind in all directions. Hence it is required to keep the senses under control by applying the intellect. This implies, not seeing what should not be seen, not hearing what should not be heard, not eating what should not be eaten, not doing what should not be done. Doing thus is called, Dhamma, in Sanskrit. The mind can flow wherever it likes, independently also, without the help of the sense organs. In such cases the mind should be brought back with the application of intelligence. This direct method of keeping the mind poised is called, Shama. After coming to know so many details about mind and its concentration, some may ask, after all, what is the need to keep the mind under control? A correct answer to this must be known. The answer is just this. If one's mind is under one's own control, great goals can be achieved through it, while if it is not, it becomes well nigh impossible to do even the most ordinary things. Truly the mind is endowed with tremendous, demonical strength. Yet many seem to be weak-minded at times or all through their lives, the reason being that their mental energies have been dissipated indiscriminately. Not all are aware that the sun's rays have the power to ignite fire. Why don't they know? The reason is, they would not have seen the sun's rays creating fire and burning down things. But when the same rays are passed through a convex lens and made to fall on a piece of paper, they can burn the paper. How did the rays acquire this power? It was the result of making them converge, and thereby, concentrated. Earlier, they were scattered in different directions. Hence, even though they could produce heat, they could not burn. But after becoming concentrated they could produce blazing fire. This is a secret to be noted. There lies remarkable power in our minds, intrinsically.